Hello and thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to look at how to get all of your old music off of those dated tea coasters, also known as CDs, and put it onto something a little more convenient like a USB stick. This is a process known as CD ripping, and to do this we'll be using some open source software called Free Audio Converter. So if this is of interest to you, stick around. Before we get started, let's give a quick mention to the legality of CD ripping. This process is technically known as format shifting, in other words taking one type of media, a CD for example, and copying it to a different one, such as a USB stick. In most countries, providing you have purchased the original content, it is perfectly legal to transfer it onto something else. However, if you are not sure what the rules are in your part of the world, you may wish to check this first. With that said, let's begin. OK, so as I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to need some software to do this. So first of all, open your web browser and we're going to browse for the free audio converter. And if we look in there, it's this one, freeac.org. So click on that. And on the left hand side of the menu, we've got the downloads option here and under that this is actually cross-platform so if you were to scroll down you've got Windows, Mac and Linux versions of the software here I'm using Windows so I'm going to download this self-extracting installer and we can minimize our web browser and let's go to find that download so hopefully there we go it's downloaded in our downloads so to install the software just double click it and agree to that and on the wizard we're going to click next and then agree to the license terms which it's free and open source which is fantastic so just say yes and then it's telling us where it's going to put it in program files next the default options to install the program itself, international language support and an online update to make sure that the software keeps itself update, up to date. They're all fine to leave checked. We don't need any of the command line or these other bits so leave them as they are and click next. And on this next screen it's selected to create a start menu group and a desktop icon so again we can leave those as they are and click next and it's now ready to install so click next and here we go it's going through the installation wizard that was nice and fast it's quite a, a reasonably small program and click finish and we can come out of that okay so as you can see it's put us a shortcut on our desktop for the free audio converter I've also got my media player VLC installed here so if you haven't got that on your computer I highly recommend it um, if you want to go to the VLC Media Player website and download that. What we're going to do now is if I pop in to File Explorer and I'm going to put my CD into my computer. So let's go to this PC and just wait for the disk drive to read the CD. And in a moment it should show us that we've got an audio CD in the drive. There we go, so it's detected it. So if I right click on my audio CD, because I've already got VLC Media Player installed, I can choose that option and that will start to play my audio CD. This is a, a collection of 10 tracks that I just quickly put together of royalty free music just for demonstration purposes, but you can see within VLC media player our tracks are showing up complete with their titles okay that was just to show you what was on the CD itself let's just close those windows and now we can begin the fun part so if we double click the free audio converter icon to launch the software and the first thing you'll see is we get a tip of the day so if you read through these they'll tell you more about the software and you can click down here to show the next 
tip so some helpful advice as to how the software works now you can leave the cross in this box here which will continue when you use the software in future to show tips on startup or you can take the cross out of the box and then the tips will disappear so that's up to you and click OK So if we just have a, a quick look around the free audio converter interface and start to familiarize ourselves with the layout and the controls. On the top menu up here we've got a file drop down list which allows us to add audio files or audio CD um, contents. We can likewise remove them from the program if we added something that we then didn't want anymore when we've built up um, a list of tracks that we're going to convert we could save a job list so that if we were not quite finished we could come back to it and load the job list at a later point we can clear the job list and exit the program we've got the database which i'll talk more about the online connection to the CDDB database a little bit later. We've got options where you can do the settings and configure the encoders and we've got the actual controls to start, pause and stop the encoding process. Okay, so while it's great to have those drop down lists along the top, it's even better to have these icons because these give us quick access to the parts that we're going to use the most often. So if we start here at the top left, we've got an option to add audio files to our job list. Next to that, we've got an option to add an audio CD to the job list, which is the one that we'll be using in a little bit. Next to that, we've got an option to remove entries from the job list. If we decided we later didn't want something in there, we can take them out. And to the right of that, we've got an option to clear the entire job list. So if we just want to start over, we can click that button. OK, next along, we've got the option for querying the CDDB database, which what that will do is if you've got an audio CD that the Internet database is aware of, it will pull down lots of extra information about it and you'll be able to add that to your tracks all automatically which is really nice and handy. On the right of that we've got an option to submit data to the database so if your content if the database isn't aware of it you could actually um, add the information about the content to the database. To the right of that we've got configuring general settings so if I just click that and we'll have a look on that now um, We've got these tabs along the top. So the first tab is the encoder. So the one we're going to be using is obviously MP3, which is the default selected option. If we click this drop down list to the right of the MP3 encoder, you can see that we've got several other types of encoders we can use if we don't want to, to do MP3. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to stick with MP3. We can click the configure encoder button here, which depending on the type of encoder you're using, these options will vary. I'll go through the MP3 ones briefly because that's the codec that we're going to use. So on the basic tab, you've got presets, which the recommended option is to leave it on standard fast, but you do have the option to change it in here and even to do custom settings. So by default, um, it's using variable bitrate here. Um, you've also got the option to do average bitrate or constant bitrate. Um, variable bitrate is said to be better for the machine to work out and automatically judge the best bitrate to match the, the file size and quality. But some people do experience problems with audio players where the seeking doesn't work properly when a track's been recorded in variable bitrate. So you may wish to alter that to constant bitrate. Um, and what that does is, as the name suggests, it just keeps it the same throughout the track. 
So here, if you were doing that, you could actually set the bitrate, which by default it's set to 192 kilobits a second. Um, a, an audio CD, they say, is generally comparable to a bitrate of 128 kilobits a second. So we're well above that, so that would do fine, but you can adjust that to suit. Now, bear in mind, the higher you go with this, the better the quality. Um, but it also will make the file sizes of your mp3 tracks larger whereas if you go lower you're going to have smaller tracks but the quality will drop off as well you also have the option down here to actually set the quality slider so you can slide from uh, the worse option down here to the better one up here um, so if you want to improve the quality of your tracks you can try the the quality slider as well so these may be worth uh, playing around with to see which settings uh, work best for you I'm going to leave that um, on constant bit rate at the 192 kilobits a second on that tab on the miscellaneous we can leave things alone in here uh, stereo mode we could force it to either mono or, or stereo um, but it's smart enough to know that if the track is in stereo, if we leave it on audio, it's going to rip it in stereo as well, as long as it's on the, the auto. Uh, expert, unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't fiddle in there. Audio processing, um, so we've got the output sampling right here, which again, we could just leave on auto, but since we're dealing with a CD, we know that CDs are typically typically recorded at a frequency of 44.1 kilohertz. So, we could actually change that to the actual frequency of the, the CD or, or likewise just leave it on auto. Uh, when you're happy with your options, click OK. Right, so we've got an option down here of setting the output location. So by default, it's going to stick it in my home directory in the music folder, which may be fine. But if you've already got a lot of music in there, you might want to keep it separate so that you can find your ripped tracks nice and easily. So what I tend to do, if we open File Explorer and we go to our music folder, mine doesn't have any ink because I've just set this machine up for demonstration purposes. But if it did, you could make a new folder and call it something like ripped or mp3 or something that's obvious. And if we close that, and now in here, if we browse, we should be able to go through um, browsing and find that folder that we just set up and select that and click OK. And now it's going to output our MP3 files into that directory when it's finished. Now at the bottom of this uh, encoder tab, we've got the file name pattern. So if you use the drop down, list you can choose whether you just want the artist title um, whether you want the album in there the track so you you can basically use this uh, drop down list here through all these different options and choose uh, what's best for you so if we go let's just pick that one uh, artist album track and title so that should pull in everything that's available moving on to the playlists tab You've got the option in here of creating uh, playlists to go with your music files so that if you were loading them into an MP3 player or some other type of audio player, uh, you can actually uh, ahead of time create playlists so that you can play them straight away rather than say creating them on the, the audio, audio player itself. I'm not going to do that now, but this is where the option is. If we move on to the language tab, obviously it's got English um, for me selected by default, but you could quite easily come in here and change the language. On the Ripper tab, it's picked up my physical DVD um, CD drive on the computer. So if you had more than one, you'd click the drop down to select the drive for your machine. Now, I'm not sure why you would want to, but you do have the option as well to limit the speed that the drive will read at. Um, so you would set that here um, and you've got some other options to do with the drive in here as well. So if we move on to the CDDB tab, this is the settings for the online database I mentioned earlier. Now, 
unfortunately this database is actually closing down uh, which is really sad because it's been a, around for a long time and it's an excellent resource but I shall just pull up an article I found with the actual developer of the free audio converter software okay so it's here on the sourceforge.net forum um, and this is the developer himself speaking so I'd just like to draw your attention to this part here so he's basically acknowledging that the CDDB service is closing down but his intention is moving forwards to move to the Music Brains service which is another really good online music database but obviously that's going to take a little bit of time but he does actually point out down here on the last line that um, he'll continue to make support available for any database queries through his software even after the official servers close down before he manages to move it over onto the Music Brains service so so long as you keep the free audio converter software up to date the service by the sounds of it for accessing extra information from the internet or from an internet database should continue to work so it's it's another good option as we talked about earlier through the installation process of make ticking that option or leaving that option ticked to make sure that the software keeps itself up to date so obviously moving forwards any changes that take place to the online database and retrieving the uh, music and track information from there you'll start to see them in here as the developer makes the changes because this is the location on the internet that it's pointing to to retrieve that information if we click on the plugins tab you'll notice you've got input and output plugins so there's nothing there on the input at the moment and there's a single output plugins but this is where you would find and configure any plugins for the software the info tags uh, you can leave all of this on the defaults it's basically set up for ID3 um, tagging so all of that information is in here and when we're happy with all of those settings that we've set up we can click the OK button so we've just looked at the general settings or configuring general settings option next along on the uh, toolbar at the top we've got configuring the audio encoder which is basically a quick way of getting to that encoder configuration box that we looked at earlier from within general settings so we can come out of there you've then got the basically the go button so when you've built up all your tracks in here and you're ready to actually do the ripping in our case CD ripping um, that's the go button and a nice option on here is rather than actually coming into the configuration of the settings if you click this drop down list here you can actually select the type of encoding you want to do as you do it so because I've set it in the settings or, or by default it was already set to mp3 when I click the big green go button it will encode and rip in mp3 but if I decided for some reason maybe I wanted a much better quality so I'm going to use flak uh, if I didn't want to go fiddling in the settings I could literally click this when I'm ready to go I could click this drop down list and choose flak from here and record to flak straight away which is a nice option to be much quicker and it, it's very handy for it to be there um, along here when the encoding started we've got the option to pause it if we want to midway through and then we can resume it um, later on if for any reason we needed to do that or we can stop the encoding completely okay the time has come so we're going to rip our CD so it's still in my CD drive so if I come up to the option at the top here the second one along add audio CD content and click on that and the first thing it's going to tell us is that there's no um, entry for this CD in that online database that we talked about and although the database um, the original database is still functioning at, at this current time um, 
the reason it's not pulled an entry through is because as I said earlier this is a, a compilation disc I've put together myself with um, royalty free music for the demonstration so because it's not an official um, CD there's not going to be a record of it in the database that's why we're getting this message so I can just click OK to continue and now as you can see it's pulled through the tracks on the CD drive and they're all listed in the job list. A nice touch in the free audio to converter software is that you can actually use this job list interface to check the tracks so if I was to select a track at the top right here we've got some little controls so obviously you'll be familiar with these icons for play pause stop uh, previous track next track and there's even a, an eject button that will physically eject the CD from your computer's CD drive so if I was to select a, a track on here and click the play button and I can hear the CD spinning up and there we go let's just pause that so in fact stop it um, so you can actually have a play around and, and check your tracks out and and well effectively use the free audio converter as a as a kind of makeshift player while you're checking out your music and, and deciding on the order of how you want things speaking of which if i'm not happy with the order that they are originally on the cd all i have to do is is grab hold of a track and as you can see i can drag and drop and pull it wherever I want it so I could reorder my tracks as I want them to be. Also you'll notice on the left hand side here all of the tracks we've imported are obviously selected because the fact we've imported them it assumes we're going to want to rip them and, and re-encode them to mp3. If you want to if there's any tracks on there you don't want so a, a severe um, example would be if you didn't want any you can come to these little toggles at the side of the screen and you can actually there you go it's quite a small little toggle that you can toggle the whole lot of tracks on or off or alternatively you can come to the side of a single track and if you can get your little pointer on there um, you can turn the individual tracks on or off if you didn't want them all to be ripped so but probably most of the time you're going to want to rip the full album so you can just leave them selected. Okay so if we look at the lower part of the user interface down here we've got um, more information about the tracks. Now mine haven't got a lot of information because obviously because it's a compilation I put together myself it wasn't able to pull in any extra data or information about it from the internet. Um, if this was a an existing album obviously these fields would be more populated but if like I've done you've put together your own compilation there's nothing to stop you filling these entries in if you want so obviously each time I choose a track the information is relevant to that track so I could fill in if I wanted to call it say bite my pie um, I could fill in that uh, information for the artist for that track if that was relevant and I could do the same for other tracks if I wanted to and you can see it's actually changing from unknown artist into what I've worded it to so feel free to put your own information in if it's either not there or, or not correct you can uh, sort that out yourself um, you can see further down that we've got the output directory that we set earlier um, that can be changed with the browse button if you decide you want to alter it now. Um, I'm happy for it to be in that music rip file that I created. Um, and we're going to have a, a file progress in a moment. So when you're happy with all of those options and ready to go, we can come up here and click the green start the encoding process button. So here we go. Let's begin. And as you can see, it's starting with the top title um, beach walk and you can actually see the progress in percentage and even estimating the time that's left and how much time has passed and then the total 
you've got two bars going along the top one is the current track and then the lower one bar is the entire album so it's all it gives you quite a, a good idea of, of how long it thinks the process will take and how far along it is so I'll pause the video here because there's 10 tracks to get through and I'll come back when it's complete right so that's it the encoding ripping process is complete as you can see it worked its way one track at a time down the list removing each one from the job list as it did it and now that it's complete the job list is empty so if we open file explorer and go and have a look in here and come to our music directory and ripped and there you go you can actually see in there I have got all 10 tracks have appeared in my rip directory and if we right click on one of them and choose properties you can see that it is set as an mp3 file which is what we wanted now as you can see um, because this is effectively a, a, a new machine I've set up for this video unfortunately it's associating file types with in this case groove music which um, isn't what I want at all so I'm just going to change that and because I've got VLC media player on here I'm going to choose that instead and select OK and we can see that's more like it in the background they've all changed to the little traffic cone and if we click OK on there now I can double click a track and there we go just close that so they're all there ready to go and if I press well select a, a track first single left click it press ctrl a on my keyboard to highlight them all and if I right click and I could add to a create a, a playlist on VLC or I could alternatively just do play with VLC media player and as you can see just pause that because it's a little bit noisy um, and you can see it's now got all of my tracks within my VLC media player so I can literally double click the track to play it and there you go that's all uh, ready for us it's our mp3s are, are there on our computer hard drive now if I just close out of VLC um, and we can close out of free audio converter now as well because that's done its job for us and in just a moment I'll show you how we're going to get that onto our USB stick right so first grab yourself a USB memory stick plug it into your computer there we go so mine is the USB E drive it's created so and it's opened it up for me obviously I'd just go to this PC and to the USB E drive if it hadn't done that I'm going to move that over to the right hand side of the window to resize it there and I'm going to pull my ripped files to the left hand side of the window and now it's just some simple copying and pasting so if I right click inside the USB stick and create a new folder and you could call this the name of the album or whatever you like just something that's meaningful to you so I'm gonna go with bite my pie for this and I'm gonna double click in there and on the left window I'm gonna make sure again control A that all of them are selected um, I can either do Control C to copy on the keyboard or right click and copy and then if I click inside the BiteMapi memory stick folder I can either go right click and paste or I could also go Control V for the keyboard shortcuts so that has now copied all of our ripped tracks onto our memory stick so we can now close out of that and on the memory stick if I come back up a level um, you can see I've now got that one folder now if I was doing the process over again and ripping my next audio CD I could go through the entire process as we've just done 
and when I get to this stage I could obviously create um, another new folder and call it whatever it is um, so my next album and then I could copy the tracks into there and the beauty of mp3s is because they're a much smaller file type than the WAV files that traditionally make up your CD you can get lots and lots of tracks uh, thousands of tracks on a memory stick particularly again it's going to depend on the size of the memory stick but with memory sticks being multiples of gigabytes in size these days you're going to get a lot of albums on a single memory stick the one thing i would say is that if you are doing this process seriously and converting your audio cds onto memory stick make sure that you don't just leave the one copy on a single memory stick I would copy and paste them onto another memory stick or keep them on the mp3s as well on your computer hard drive because memory sticks aren't infallible and if that dies obviously it takes all your tracks with with it and you don't want to have to keep going through this process because your memory stick died so it, it's one of those jobs you'd like to do it once and then forget about it so that's my recommendation the top tip for the day is just to make sure that you've got a, a backup of any USB music memory sticks that you create and that's it we can close down the window and it's job done we've now successfully ripped our CD into mp3 tracks and copied them onto a USB stick I hope you found this video helpful, as I'm sure you'll agree the free audio converter software is an excellent tool. Being open source I doubt the developer would object to a small donation on the free AC website. And that's it for now. As always, if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Until next time, take care.